All right, welcome back to Shadow Shorts. If we've never met before, my name is Jeff Eccles. I am a senior advisor and the head of marketing for Shadow Partners. And every weekday, I bring you a short conversation with an expert, a thought leader in the field of innovation for the built environment. And today's conversation is going to be really interesting. Uh, if you're not familiar with the architecture, the engineering space, um, I think you're going to get a lot out of this conversation today because I am joined by Mike Lawless. He is the Director of Innovation at IMAG, which is an engineering firm. It's a design firm. So, um, Mike, first of all, thank you for joining me today. I'm glad that you're here. And um, I'm intrigued by the idea that your title is Director of Innovation. Why does an engineering company that you know, I'm, you'll get into this, I'm sure, this, this designing, MEP, structural, et cetera. Why does a company like that have a director of innovation? No, that's a, yeah, and that's a great question. So um, about two years ago, I took, a, I took on this role as a new role for the firm, and our leadership decided, listen, we see a lot of changes in our industry. You know, how are we going to get prepared for those? And how are we going to do that? And and so I I came into this role and really the the mission I put together sort of a mission. What's the purpose? But really the the big purpose is to say if I, if we look out to this industry, you know, ten years in the future, you know, or more, you know, beyond where you can really predict necessarily with a lot of accuracy where we're headed. Where do we think in general are we headed? And then what are the things that we need to do today and tomorrow as a firm to make sure we're prepared and positioned to help our clients? Uh, in that future state of our industry. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, I'm, I'm setting that up. That's sort of setting the ball on the tee there because a lot of the people at Shadow Partners, um, a lot of the people that we partner with, a lot of the people that we work with are at large engineering, construction firms, et cetera, and uh, often have titles like yours. And they are, they're doing exactly what you're talking about. And some of them are vetting startups uh, on a daily or, or, you know, multiple per day basis and some of them not, but, but it's all about that vision, isn't it? It's looking, looking forward at the future. Um, how did you, you know, you said you've been in the role for, for two years. How did you evolve to the point where it made sense for that to be the role for you? Yeah. I mean, I think, um, you know, obviously getting selected for this role, I've, I've had a lot of, a number of ideas o over the years and, and made suggestions. And some of those have been, I think, turned out um, to be pretty good thoughts about where, you know, kind of where we should head. Not, I'm not shy about sharing and asking questions about, about where we headed, where we're headed. And, you know, I've, our, our CEO, Paul Van Dyne has gotten calls from me and I'm like talking to him and then I'm like, with about an idea. I'm like, Paul, where are you? He's like, I'm walking on the beach with my wife. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. You know, we could, we could talk more, but he's always willing to take the calls and, and listen. And so, um, you know, as a firm, I led a team and we had, we had meetings about innovation and where we were headed. And I, I would share my thoughts and, you know, from what, you know, I was pretty honored that they, they asked me to do this. And, you know, I think, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty fortunate. I've always had a different sort of viewpoint, a different perspective, probably an odd perspective at times. And as a younger kid, you know, definitely a challenge with some of those things. I, I feel like this is, you know, really the role that maybe suits me the best of any role I, I've had. So it's, it's been pretty exciting for me. Uh, that makes sense. Are you, are you paying attention mainly to your services and how you serve your clients? Or are you looking even beyond that at the, the technology that's going to be involved in, in building, so to speak? No, definitely looking, um, beyond just what we do day to day to day. I mean, we, we do innovation, you know, also in like our business practices and, and those sorts of things. And I'm not necessarily as engaged in that. I'm more focused on how do we do things that, you know, help our clients. You know, we talk about outcomes, how do we get better outcomes for our clients? And then also, you know, it's, a lot of that also goes along with how are we efficient in the things that we do. But I don't think, I think as we look to the future and we think about the future, you know, we're, we do a lot of design, you know, it's a big part of what we do, but we also have some really nice um, folks that work in more of the planning stage. We've got health information, technology planning, you know, intelligent buildings, you know, we do urban planning. And then when you think about like the life cycle of a project, 
you know, on the construction side of things, we've got a group that does integration and helps integrate some of these disparate technologies for the clients so that when they open the building, it works the way it should. And then once the building is operational, you know, how do we optimize that operation? I think with where the world's going with technology, I think as engineers and design engineers, what we do influences that whole life cycle of the project. And with where technology is going, we're going to have more insight and ability to influence the entire the entirety of the project life cycle and i think that as engineers i think we should be pretty excited about that yeah yeah it seems like that would be exciting when you when you're looking out into the future and i don't know how far out you're looking how far you're projecting but but what are some of the the bigger issues that you see coming that that you need to prepare for i mean i think one of the it gets talked about a lot and you can think about you know, is AI, you know, generative AI, AI as a tool, you know, and it, it fuels innovation, it's going to fuel, you know, automation. And so in our industry, some of the things that we do are definitely, you know, can be automated, right? And how do we, you know, how do we, we've started that journey. Um, how do we put things in place? I don't know that, I don't think we're ever going to fully replace engineers. So how do we, you know, Augment, you know, we talk about AI, artificial intelligence. You know, I, I've heard you know, some some discussions, and one of the things that resonated with me is it's really can be thought of as like augmented intelligence. How do we help our engineers have the right information to make good decisions on the projects that they do? And then how do we? I mean, frankly, some of the things that we do can be be automated, but how do we engage the engineer throughout that process so we get you know the quality documents and and the right outcomes that we're looking for? Right. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's it's still, um, you know, what, what was the old saying <laughs> back when we were kids? Garbage in, garbage out. Um, yeah, it's it's still going to be in that realm, right? When um, when you're looking into the future and you're looking at technologies like AI, generative AI, as you said, and and um, other tools that are out there, are you engaging with with others uh, outside of the firm? You know, I mentioned before that. You know, I had a conversation, actually, I have a conversation later today with somebody that at a large construction firm that vets many, many startups per year. Are you engaging with people outside the firm or are you thinking about things more theoretically, um, you know, approaching it from the inside or what's, what's your what's your process and ecosystem look like? No, I mean, I think. If, if you're not looking, I think in, in my role, if you're not looking outside of IMEG, we're, you're, you're, we're missing the mark. And I think even looking outside of our industry, you know, there's so much crossover between different technologies. And a lot of times we may take a technology that was intended for more manufacturing and how can we use that for what, what we want to do? Um, so, no, yeah, I'd absolutely, you know, engage with a number of startups and different, you know, different options. Um, for that, I, I don't know how I don't know how else, I don't know how else you would do it. I guess. Yeah, yeah, that that, that makes sense to me. It's uh, yeah, I, I think one of the things we suffer from, and uh, for those that are watching that don't know, my background is architecture. I spent uh, over twenty years working in firms, and and so you know, like Mike, I'm looking and thinking about the future of design. Uh, I still teach um, at university. And so always thinking about the future, and, and I think you're exactly right. There's so much conversation to our own detriment about this is the way we've always done it. And that's, that's of course, not innovation or leading towards innovation. So, yeah, we have to, we have to think differently and look for uh, examples beyond our own walls or even own profession. Uh, what, are, what are some of your, uh, I, I don't know, maybe favorite things that, uh, that have come out of the last couple of years and in your role? Yeah, I think before I dive in, I just want to say one more thing about collaboration and those things. And so our, our purpose statement, you know, starts out with together because in our industry, we, sh we do everything as a team, which I love. Right. And I think that part of it, doing these things together, not just on our own is important. And I think sometimes even those of us that may think of ourselves as competitors, we, we need to share information and not be shy about sharing. Here's what we're doing. And here's, here's what our, our data is We're we can tend to be a fragmented industry. And I think sometimes we're, we're a little bit um, reluctant to, to share. I think sometimes internally I get challenged. Like, do we really want to share that? I said, absolutely. 
you know, that I think it's going to be better in the long run that we share. We're going to learn, you know, from what we share with them. They'll hopefully reciprocate. Sometimes you have to be the first one to share. Um, so I think the, uh, from what am I most proud of? So I think, you know, part of my philosophy and what I think is that it's, you know, it's really about the people and how do we, you know, the technology, there's great technologies out there. Nobody uses them. You know, you talked about whether or not I'm theoretical or I, I like to implement. I think about it as if it's, if it's theoretical. I mean, it's interesting, but what's the point? You know, if, if you've got these great technologies and you don't use them, um, you know, I don't, I don't know that I'm accomplishing the goals that, that I'm, I'm looking for. So when I took over the role, one of the things, we've been an innovative firm for a long time, new to the role, you know, we're going to need to advance innovation. And so what, what I started um, about a year and a half ago was what we call the idea program. And so we bring folks from our different teams and they come work with myself and then our director of sustainability, which goes pretty hand in hand with innovation and sort of help advance our innovation efforts and some of our technology initiatives as well. And then after a period of time, you know, they go back to their teams. And so it just helps to build and spread that sort of that network of innovation. I don't think, um, I think it's great to have a group that can work, be dedicated to innovation, but what I'm most interested in is continuing to build on our overall firm's innovation, mm. innovative culture and having a small group of people that innovates isn't the same, doesn't have the same powers. If we have all 2,500 of us as a firm innovating, there's a lot of power in, in that that group of people working together to, to solve these problems. Yeah, I, I'm glad you said that. We've got a conversation coming up. Um, here's a little commercial break, I guess. Uh, in October in Atlanta, um, we will host the seventh annual Shadow Summit, the 24th through the 26th of October in Atlanta. And one of the talks that we just nailed down um, uh, this week, actually, for the summit, it hasn't talk hasn't even been announced yet, but it's it'll be a talk about building a culture of innovation. So I'm glad that that you said that. It, it sounds like you're you're right in that that same uh, same thought process, uh, same belief that there has to be a, a culture. You have to develop a culture um, within the organization to be uh, to be a culture of innovation. No, absolutely. I, I'll, so I went to the uh, I went to the Shadow Summit last year, and I, this is on. We didn't talk about this ahead of time, but had a great ex for really a great experience, a great conference, one of the, probably the better conferences mm -hmm. I've been to. But yes, the the culture to go to the culture of innovation piece. So um, I'm an engineer. The rest of my three siblings are teachers and coaches. My parents are teachers and my dad coached, you know, among other things like 53 seasons or so of track. And so, you know, I'm an engineer, but I definitely have that perspective of how do we, I love working with people and coaching and mentoring and fostering hopefully that environment where people are comfortable to take risks and innovate. I, I think that's just really important um, for, for any company. It's, I think the, the, the goal there is we're going to have change. Our industry is going to have change. And I think we're coming up on a time where I think every time people would say, hey, I think we're going to have more rapid change in the future. But I think if you look at over time, the cycles of, of change have definitely gotten shorter. And how do you prepare for that? One of the best ways to prepare for that is having an organization that is innovative and ready to make those changes and adopt the new technologies as they come out and can, you know, innovate at the speed of, of technology that we're going to see. Yeah. Yeah. We, we see that all the time. And in fact, we in in-house and in talks we do around the, the country at conferences and things, we talk about the fact that we're, we're in this, um, uh, I think we used to talk about, we're sort of on the brink, but now we're in this, uh, uh, a decade, this exponential decade, you know, where this change, like you said, the, the cycles are getting shorter and the change is going to be because of that short cycling, changes are going to be more intense or seem more intense. So I think that's a, that's a really great point. I'm glad that uh, at IMEG that you're, you're looking ahead towards that and, and preparing for that and preparing your, your, uh, uh, your clients for that, your customers for that as well. That's super important in, in, uh, the service industry, of course. Um, if you're watching this right now, either live or in some time shifted version, um, first of all, glad that you're here. Second of all, if you enjoy conversations like this, and obviously we're just scratching the surface. 
they're shadow short. So we've got 10 to 15 minutes for these conversations. We could take this for at least an hour uh, on these couple of topics that we're touching on. But if you want more of this, think about Shadow Summit. Like I said, it's the seventh annual. It'll be in Atlanta, October 24th through 26th. The opening reception is the 24th and two days of, of uh, deep discussions, uh, taking, taking ideas like what Mike and I have been talking about and really doing a deep dive into them uh, over the course of the couple of days. Our, our uh, CEO, KP Reddy, has described Shadow Summit 2023 as a Cliff's Notes version of everything that's happened in terms of innovation for the built environment this year. And then a heads up, a, a, uh, this is what you need to pay attention to. This is what you need to plan for, what you need to budget for in terms of innovation for 2024. So that's sort of in a nutshell what we're looking at over the course of a couple of days. So go to shadowsummit.com to learn more about that. Uh, to uh, it, it's, it's a highly curated, uh, purposefully intimate conference. There's only going to be 200 tickets, so and, and many of those are sold already. So if you if you want, uh, go over to shadowsummit.com and there's a button at the top where you can apply to uh, to get a ticket and to join us. And if you'd like to sponsor something like that, there are still sponsorship opportunities as well. Shadowsummit.com and we can we can uh, let you know more about that. Uh, and uh, I would be remiss if I didn't say, hey, reach out to Mike Lawless on LinkedIn, connect with him, learn more about IMEG, and learn more about what a director of innovation at a large engineering firm does and, and why. Uh, it does surprise me uh, from time to time, and we've talked about this, that I'll run into somebody that doesn't understand. Why Why is there someone that's paying attention to, to uh, innovation at a construction firm or an architecture firm or an engineering firm? And Mike is uh, spilling the beans. He's telling you why uh, it's really important as we look forward to the future, not only of, of his profession, design and delivery on design, but also uh, everything in the built environment. So, Mike, I really appreciate you being here um, yeah. and sharing your insights and, and uh, I admire what you're doing over there at IMEG. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. It was fun. Yeah, absolutely. Glad you're here. Thanks for this. And thanks to you for watching. I'll be back tomorrow with another Shadow Short, another uh, conversation with an expert, a thought leader in the realm of innovation for the built environment. Thanks for joining us. See you tomorrow.